I'd like to thank Peter Turner, Father Bernard, and the Catholic Life Education and Mission Team for this opportunity to talk to you all. There's some exciting news this year. As this grows and improves, this year the finalists who will be invited to the opening on the first Sunday of Advent at the University of Notre Dame this year. And all our special guests and the bishop and so on will be there to present you with their, your prizes and trophies. As well as that, if you look in the corner of the Catholic Weekly, they ask me, how many copies do you make of the exhibition booklet each year? And I said, oh, about 700. He said, that's not enough. Let's make 11,000 and put the booklet in every Catholic Weekly in the full distribution of the Catholic Weekly. So that's a very big audience and a very big task for this um, team of judges who are thinking, oh, uh, you know, a lot of families are going to see this work, including probably artists and professionals and educators and, and theologians and so on. So we're looking at every last phrase, square millimetre of colour, symbol and paint and so on. Our students' work, the fruit of deep reflective thinking, began as a blank sheet of paper or a canvas. That is a very fearful thing. You are in complete control and I hope you agree that the works upstairs are very original. I'd like to share with you a short poem by the American author Susie Massey. My canvas is your sacred tablet. Colours, shapes, strokes are my stepping stones to you. Day to day a practice in holy living. Our souls connect and are ignited by paint. Others freshen my artistic opening. My wake-up call is the blank page. Our souls connect and are united by paint. My wake-up call is the blank canvas. My journal, your sacred tablet. Susie Massey. This beginning, you must agree, Thanks to the creative and dedicated classroom teachers who have moved, these children have moved, challenged and enlightened us. And they are deserving of applause. Considering from catechists in Sydney, uh, teachers in the Bathurst Diocese, Sydney and ourselves, I will, with the team of judges in Sydney, look at a short list of a thousand artworks. They will be judged during the next few weeks and we need to have an assessment criteria. That criteria looks at both the religious education and the visual arts for stage three, but we're also looking at the work of very talented and gifted individual children. The criteria is originality of illustration, depth of personal reflection, Connection to the scriptures, essential. The consistency of style. Many of the works up there you will notice from the top millimetre to the very bottom has been done by the hand of that child. No one else could have done it. The standard of skills and techniques in oil pastels, charcoal, pencil work, paint, acrylics, collage, computer generated art. And finally, is it on the right surface, the right media? We are quality visual artists as well. Michelangelo had a bit of a sense of humour. He was also a gifted individual. He seems to be sharing with us his humour, but this is serious. Students and their teachers have been challenging themselves for many weeks. Many of the students and teachers started in term two. A couple of hours a week for 10 or 12 weeks. Drafting, redrafting, abandoning, restarting, rewriting, adding meaning over and over. That's what it is. Like Michelangelo, there were many hours of thought and work that led to those works. They don't just walk in the door and create. So when you say, God, could the children do that? Yes, after many hours of hard work. So as well as talent, there's the persistence, perseverance and commitment. And that is in pastels and chalk. It is in wet on wet technique with brush skills, toning, mixing, colour mixing, and colour mixing using the universal symbolic meaning of colour to add 
uh, a message to their scriptural interpretation. And then you've got the very fine pencil work, hatching, lighting, shadow. As well as that, the hard work and practice has led to diverse personal connections. We have references to grandmother's wisdom, family values, personal goals, ancestry, and even the daily meal and gift-giving traditions of the family. We have high-order emotional intelligence in these works. Read into and look at the expressions on the faces of the characters. As well as that, thank you all those teachers have been on Holy Land pilgrimages. You've been using your experience to great effect. We have authentic imagery from the Holy Land in our artworks. Olive oil lamps, buildings, pathways, patterns on Hebrews, uh, clothing and including the Eastern Magi. As well as that, the students have in many cases made connections to their own personal life, their own personal goals and visions. They have captured the wonderful Christmas message as well of joy, hope and peace and, and in dynamic ways. But as well as that, if you do what the judges did and look closely you'll see hidden things that may be missed. The joy, the surprise, and the delight that are in some of these artworks has to be celebrated. But then there are those that move some of the judges to tears. There are invitations to have an intimate encounter in the stable, up in the rafters with a native bird of Israel, watching down from a nest made of hay, a child born on hay. And as well as that, how special is it, parents, when your children sitting here see the love, support, protection and presence of God that's in the Christmas story and say, I experience it in my home with my family and that's why I've painted or drawn this picture. That must give you great hope as a Catholic parent that your children are seeing those connections. That is to be celebrated. I hope you've seen new perspectives, new ways of encountering the, the uh, Christmas story. Read carefully, look closely, revisit the message of Christmas through the reflective eyes, the hearts and minds of your children. You will be rewarded. Thank you. <laughs>